Hey guys, Mike Reed with Midwest Whitetail here. Today we're gonna go over how to score your trophy, particularly a whitetail buck, once you get them on the ground. You know, there's lots of controversy over scoring, but um, in general, I think there's a lot of value in using that as a data point to know how your management strategies might be going. You know, if you're making efforts to pass deer, making efforts to improve habitat, improve nutrition. You know, it's nice to see that reflected in some of the overall herd, you know, antler growth. And sometimes it's just fun to know and uh, have your personal best or, you know, bragging rights over your buddies or your hunting group. I uh, use the Pope and Young or Boone and Crockett method. There are some other methods out there, but today we're gonna be focusing on that method in particular. And a couple things you need. The primary tool is gonna to be a metal quarter inch tape. That's the recommended tool so you don't get any stretch when you measure things. You can also use a metal cable and sometimes that's easier uh, to measure the beams or the tine length um, if you're using the cable and then dropping your, your cable onto a measuring tape and measuring it that way. Couple things to start with. Scorable points have to be an inch okay one inch in length and then the length of the point the length of the point needs to be longer than the width of the base and so if i had a one inch point that had a really broad base that is not a scoreable point with this method and they're scoring as a typical and as a non-typical so some of the terminology a lot of times when i shoot a buck we take it back to the house and in the next couple days, we're generally putting a tape on it to see if we were right with our guesses. That would be considered a green score. To actually enter any of these animals into record books, uh, it has to be uh, dried for 60 days. And so if you do it before the 60 day period, that's considered a green score. And then there's of course the gross score and then the net score. And so most of us, when we're talking with our buddies, we're talking about the gross score, but for entering things into the books, it's the net score and there's typical and non-typical so if you want to score a buck typical you measure all the right antler and you measure all the left antler each time the g1s the g2s the g3s you do side to side deduction so you only get credit for the symmetry of the shortest two so if this one's eight and this one's nine that one inch gets deducted off of the score so you do side to side deductions for asymmetry that comes up with your net typical score and then any abnormal points like this little kicker this little kicker those get deducted off of the score as well to come up with your final net typical score for a non-typical you come up with your net typical mainframe score and then you actually add in the non-typical points and so if i've got a buck with non-typical points on everything on every time um, 20, 30 inches of non-typical points, a lot of times you'll score that buck as a non-typical. But it's uh, sort of to each their own and you can obviously score them both ways if they are uh, in between sort of rack. There are a lot of bucks out there that don't fit the sort of standard bill. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to determine where the G2s are or if something's an abnormal point, if there's a, a common base, is it a common base or is it the two and the three? There's been some very famous bucks uh, argued over and disagreed upon by certified scorers. And so we're talking about your generic set of antlers here, either an eight point or a 10 point, we'll go through the basic scoring system. And so I always start out with the main beam. And the way you wanna score the main beam is you come to the lowest outer point on the burr. And you get the lowest outer point on the burr and you measure on the center line the center, the middle of the outside of the beam, all the way up to the beam. So you're not going along the bottom, you're not going along the top, you're right in the center. And so where the center transects with the lowest outer point is where you start, and you measure that curvature. This is often easier to do with a cable, but you certainly can do it with a little care with the measuring tape. After you get that, you can move to your G1s. And essentially what you're doing here, and with all tines, you want to imagine that the tine is not there. Okay, so where would the beam be 
if the tine is not there and that's what you measure back to okay where the beam where the tine meets the top of the beam so you know you hear different things people measuring midway people measuring to the bottom that's how you see all sorts of variation in score but basically where the tine meets the top of the beam and you want to envision the top of the beam as if the tine wasn't there one way to do that is having a piece of paper or a flashcard or a piece of metal or something and you can put it where it's on the beam here and on the beam there and then if you have a pencil or a pen or something like that you can mark the line and then you have a nice easy target to measure to and all of these instructions uh, can be found on their website if you need a reference it's very well spelled out they have the score sheets for all the north american big game species what the minimum entries are and what the record book entry levels are all the instructions are written down and the, the score sheets are either interactive or they're digital where you can print them so it's nice to have access to that where you can record your trophy and maybe uh, tuck it with the rack so you can reference it later the g1s work just like the other tines so you start at the top you measure down to the point where it meets the beam and you just go down and measure each tine in the same fashion all the tines are referred to with uh, the letter g and a number and so g1s g2s g3 g4 so on and so forth the circumference measurements are referenced as h's with corresponding numbers and you get four circumference measurements on each side this is another thing that is often uh, you find a lot of variety in how people do it but what the instructions uh, on the scoring system in Pope and Younger, Boone and Crockett would say is from the burr to the G1, the narrowest circumference in this spot is going to be your H1 measurement. So you're always finding the smallest circumference, the smallest circumference. Then for H2, you go between the G1 and the G2 and you slide your tape around. And again, you're using that metal tape. You're putting it around here. And you're sliding it up and down till you find the smallest measurement, okay? And you get four measurements, so H1, H2, H3, H4. So let's say you have a mainframe eight pointer and you don't have a G4. You take the distance from the G3 to the end of the beam and you go halfway. That's where you take that measurement. So the last measurement for the mainframe rack is the inside spread and the way you do that is the center line of the skull you stay perpendicular to that and then you slide back and forth and find the widest measurement and that's your inside spread so with the inside spread you just stay perpendicular to the center skull plate slide back and forth find your widest spot which usually you can see with your naked eye it's about 15 and a half inches on this buck and one key point within the Pope and Young and Boone and Crockett system is that the spread credit can only be equal to the length of the longer main beam. And so let's say my beams are 24 inches and my spread is 26. I only get 24 inches of spread credit in that system. So the tendency might be to angle the tape to get the widest or pick a point and slide like this. That's, that's um, not technically correct. You want to keep it perpendicular at all times and find the widest spread that way. Last but not least, we're going to do abnormal points. And abnormal points are any point that's not just your typical tine. And so like this point here, same sort of thing. Imaginary line as if this point were not here and you measure from the center up to the tip. And you get your measurements that way. And again, once you get all those measurements, if you wanted to know the net score and you were interested in entering it in the score books, you go through and all of your G measurements, you do side to side deductions, and then your H measurements, side to side deductions. You tally all that up, add in your inside spread, deduct your abnormal points, that would be your net typical. And then you can add your abnormal points if that's going to be your net non-typical. And that's a quick overview on how to score a whitetail buck using the Pope and Young or Boone and Crockett system.